getting there good morning in california yes it is sunny it's going to be sunny every day i mean california is kind of boring and, um i mean pretty much sunny every day you see that uh 70s and 80s 70s mostly low 70s which is great i gotta remember i turned off my sprinklers for a few days because we got some rain uh, and I love turning off my sprinklers because the water here costs a fortune. I probably spend 300 a month watering my lawn. <laughs> so it's like, uh, but, uh, you know, would love to not have to, in the, in the winter, that bill goes to practically zero. Because it's just Beth and I here. So. Um, let's see, David. Yeah, David made it. Let's see who. Let me give me shout outs. Uh, b -b 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 Bruce, I saw you. Um, wait, Bruce, you were first. Is that the first comment right there? Why is this? Oh yeah, okay. Um, boop. <laughs> in case, in case anybody wants one. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Bruce, Ed. Um, Holly, good to see you again. Um, uh, Bob Schumann, Charlie B. Gotta leave early. Okay, well, we'll try, I'll try to get to the point <laughs> for the first time ever. John Kinden, Kinden, good evening. It's raining in rugby UK. Yeah, I'm gonna, I have, actually have to do a lesson, uh, with a student, um, in London after we're done here. So, um, he may log in. I don't know. He may be watching right now. Um, let's see. Uh, Paul, good to see you. Hero, good to see you. Many, many regulars. So I told you we were going to talk about this. And, and um, oh, I need to change the title here. Uh, three pentatonic. Oops. Oh, I got to hit the edit button. Hold on. 
I'm changing the title to three pentatonic, pentatonic scales for blues. Um, and you know, one thing I, I was doing too on the when we when we played the uh, when we played the minor pentatonic, we added the blues note. So if you, I'll, I'll remind you that when we get going. And then that blues note can't stay in there. It works good on the G minor six pentatonic. The D minor minor pentatonic um, over the D chord. <laughs> Fine. It's it's that it's that um, that seven to root the flat seven to the root kind of chromatic thing, which is something you might hear horns do, right? You know, right? Um, <laughs> so we're, we'll see. Uh, hold on a second. Let me uh, let me let me add a horn track here. Is there anything on this track? Oh yeah, there is. Okay, oh, that's a pad. Okay. Um, do I have, see, logic comes with horns. I have horns that I can load, but I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Studio horns, uh, three piece section, six piece section, funk house. There we go. Let's try that. So. Sounds pretty lame, but um, let me see if I can get it to be. So we get to that five chord. You could do something like that, okay? So. All right. So there's that. Now I, I'm going to change the express, the. Uh, Bum bum bum, bum bum bum. One bum bum bum. One da da da. One That's weird. I was really late on that first one. So I guess I just wanted swung, uh, swung eighth, swung eighth notes maybe like that. No. Bum bum bum, bum bum bum, bum one. Okay, so boom, boom, boom. Okay, I'm gonna change the expression to staccato. Yeah, that's yes, not right either. Boom, boom. One, two, three. Okay, so put on the attitude. It still seems weird. Why? Because it needs to swing, I guess, but I'll just play it where I want it. That's always the best. And then just not fine. Oh, I see what I did. Yeah, that's a triplet. Okay, I see what I did. Yeah, okay, now um, change that to staccato, I guess. Yeah, that's not bad. Now that's annoying because it's an octave up. So what I'm gonna do, oops. I'm gonna add two octaves. Oops. See that? And that is that seventh, flat seventh to the major seventh to the root. But it's, um, you're not spending much time on that major seventh, which is a C sharp or a D flat. Um, and so that's kind of why it works. Hey, so, hey, Chris Long, good to see you. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> in this zone right here, trying to figure out how to do a stupid horn thing. And then I could knock that down. Um, I could do it again, down a whole step. Or um, I could go the opposite. I could go. You know what? I don't like that octave up. I'm just going to stick with the low. 
the low, the two, the bottom two octaves. So I put three octaves of horns there, and it automatically separates. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. I mean, you just gotta experiment. I can do, I can do it. I don't like any of it really, but anyway, <laughs> all of that to just show you that uh, you can um, you could justify any note. Um, oh, I'm not. I got to click on this. Um, you can justify any note, um, and but if it's it's a note that's just not working at all, um, you're probably going to not be able to spend much time on it. So, I mean, I could you know. <laughs> I could do that, and I just played all 12 notes, and then so. Uh, so. You just bought a mug? <laughs> That's awesome. Be careful, Chris. <laughs> if, you're drinking, if you're drinking with your spouse, and you're like telling her something really important, <laughs> you might have a problem if, if later she goes, but you said there wasn't going to be a quiz on this. So oh, my glasses are crooked. Okay. So um, let's see. Uh, um, I need to do, I need to do a design where it's um, the black shirt with the white letters, right? Or different colors. I'll do different colors with white lettering that says that because Nobody wears white t-shirt. I mean, it just looks like you're, you know, I don't know, <laughs> a wife beater. I should just do wife beaters with that on it. I won't be a quiz on this. Um, let's see. So um, these are the scales we're going to work on today. And what, what we're doing is we're making, the cool thing about this is if you'll notice, um, okay, the, um, up over here, I wrote out the scales, and over here, I wrote out the notes in the scales. And if you notice, the first, the, I wrote them all starting on G, even though the bottom one's called D minor pentatonic. Originally, I had it written from D, but I want you to see what's changing and what's not changing. So if you look at the difference between the the top scale up there, the G, B flat, C, D, F, that's, that's G minor pentatonic. <laughs> Very, 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 very familiar to us. Sounds very familiar. Um, and over that G7 chord, definitely has a blues sound because you've got a B in that chord and you're playing a B flat. So it's going to sound like this, uh, essentially, when you play the two notes together. But that's okay because that creates tension and that's kind of what the blues is about. Now, the next scale is the G minor pentatonic. That works great over the G or the C. Okay, just so you know, B.B. King would use that over the G as well as the C. And also, when we're playing over the G chord, again, this is the G7 chord, or if you play it acoustically, you know what I mean, if you play it with open strings, that B string, or the B note here, um, you can always add that. You can always put that in there. So like, for example, when we're going through, you can bend that, uh, B flat up to B, you can also get some of the way there. You don't have to go all the way there. You can just kind of push that B flat a little bit. You don't need to go. You don't, you don't need to go all the way to B. It just it just kind of creates. I don't know. I, I like to call it. It makes you. I like to call it the stink face note. You know. It makes your face kind of. You have to actually do that. You can't not play that note. Okay? So, but that wouldn't be the case over the C chord. Because the C chord actually does have a B flat. There's no B in the C chord. Okay? Um, and then um, when we go to the D chord, the D scale, well, the difference between the G, and the, uh, the G minor pentatonic and the G minor six pentatonic is that F goes down to E. Okay? It, like I said, it creates, I, I like to call it a happy minor pentatonic you know it's it's more country sounding it's it's just more hello from 
to Finland. Oh, the mountains of Western North Carolina. You know, I might move there. It looks beautiful. Brian, can you find me a house with a studio there? Um, uh, what music machine do you use? I'm using um, uh, uh, Logic. And I'm programming with a keyboard. Um, yeah, I use Logic. Uh, it's if, if you're a Mac user, um, it's it's actually an Apple product. Um, they bought Logic. They bought the company, and um, I was a little bummed when they did that. I thought it would go downhill, but actually, it's it, they they pack it full of stuff. It's probably the most, uh, probably the the biggest. Um, uh, $199 software you could buy. It's got so much stuff in it. Um, and it's probably the cheapest professional software I've ever seen that's used by a lot of professionals, including myself. <laughs> Recorded thousands and thousands of songs on it. Um, and then if you'll notice the difference between uh, the D minor pentatonic, which is the bottom scale over here, um, I just started it on the G, okay? Um, th formulaically, D minor pentatonic and G minor pentatonic are identical, but because they start on different notes, they're going to have different notes. Uh, but for the most part, they're the same. The only difference is the uh, G, uh, the, the B, there is no B flat in this. There's an A. And that's good because the B flat, there's no... See, if you're playing a D7 chord, that, that, that's fine. Because if you're in the key of G, you know you're going to G. So that B flat is just something that kind of centers you back to the key of G. However, it does create a little bit of a, a clash that you can get rid of simply by taking those B flats and playing A. So there's one here, there's one here, and here's one down here. I don't really use this one very often. I don't even use that one very much. It's mostly, Steve Ray Vaughan would do it a lot. And I would hear that. Uh, a lot of blues guitar players, uh, Buddy Guy, would go to that 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 A note, in this case, in the key of G, okay? So let's play these scales together. I'm going to try to go slow for you, um, and I'm just going to give you, uh, I'll give you fret numbers for now, and then maybe I touch my face so we can take a sip. We have a drinking game here. Gary's not here yet, but uh, Gary put together a list. And uh, the drinking game is uh, it, there's a lot of rules if you're not, if you're new here. But if I touch my face, that's that's a COVID no no. You're not supposed to touch your face. I find myself touching my face far more than I ever did though, because anytime I'm thirsty, I feel like I have to touch my face before I can take a drink. Uh, oh, Dennis will be here. Great, thanks, Bruce. Um, so uh, other rules: if I drop my pick, that's a sip. If I drop a thumb pick, that's two sips. Um, if I say there won't be a quiz on this, that's a sip. That doesn't count, though. If I use air quotes, which this doesn't count. If I refer to myself in the third person, it doesn't really happen. Um, if I say uh, I had a band in high school called, that will ha that may happen. Um, if I uh, leave the room, that's a fill-in-the-time sip. If I change guitars, um, then that's a uh, um, sip. Uh, let's see, there's a few others. If I express <laughs> admiration or love to my son, who's not on right now. <laughs> oh, hey, there's Dennis. Uh, then uh, that's also a sip. Uh, I don't think Alex is. Alex hasn't been on for weeks. Okay, so let's get over these. Let's do. Let's go through over these three scales. And so they're basically, each one of them is designed to kind of be played over uh, one of the each three chords. So over the G chord, we, this is the scale we could use. Um, like I said, we can use both of the first two ones. Actually, we could use all three over the G chord. Probably wouldn't be a, uh, not going to be a problem. Um, but here it is. We're going to be at third fret, sixth fret, third, fifth, three, five, three, five, three, six, three, six. Okay, um, well, let me uh, let me text someone real quick. Let them know I'm live. 
I have a friend that was asking about lessons. Um, he's he's the guy that owned the um, uh, Route 66 guitar store that I've told you about a couple times. Okay, done. All right, so uh, let's go backwards on that again. Uh, six, oops, six, three, six, three, five, three, five, three, five, three, six, three. That should be fairly familiar if you've been watching this live stream for a while. And you can, uh, we can go to snippets. Okay, now the G minor pentatonic and the D minor pentatonic, I mean, sorry, the G minor 6 pentatonic and the D minor pentatonic, we're going to have a shift on. We're going to have to go down to the second fret, which is why I wrote the diagrams out the way I did. Um, so we're going to start out with uh, 3, 6, 3, 5, and then here's where we take that F note, there's the F, down to E. To G, so two five. So if you play that much, you can hear the difference. You can hear it's a little bit. I want to. I want to say happier. I'm touching my face because I'm thirsty. All right. It has a kind of a weird sound. Um, it, it definitely does. I don't know if it sounds happy, but it just definitely sounds different. But from there, let's go to the third, third string, where three, five, three, five. And that's where you can really see, oh yeah, that fits over this C7 chord. There's the E. And then we're going to go three, six. Cool. Let's try it again, uh, and then we'll go down. We'll descend. So three, six, three, five, two, five, three, five, three, five, three, six. Backwards. Six, three, five, three, five, three, five, two, five, three, six, three. Now. As far as what finger to use or how to shift, or do you, you know, do you use your when you're hitting this when you're hitting this note and then go to this note? Do you should you use your pinky or should you use your third? Totally up to you. Um, I think part of what um, uh, part of what um, is going to happen is you're not going to use the whole scale. If you're practicing the scale, yeah, sure, yeah, you can find a way to do it. Whatever way makes the most sense to play quickly, but I, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm rarely. I'm never gonna just play and during a solo situation, um, improvising. I'm not gonna ever just play the scale like that. I'm gonna use a piece of it, you know, to make a point, to make a musical statement. Now, I, I was just thinking about this. I hadn't hadn't noticed this before, but if I were to create a hybrid scale of all three of these scales, like if I were to mash them together. And say, okay, what would we have? Well, we would have G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, a G Dorian scale. And I know there's probably some of you that are looking for a magic bullet, like, well, then can I use that scale over all three chords? And that way I don't have to have to think about each individual chord. No, I pretty pretty much can't. Um, it, it's, it's, you know, you, can, you could. <laughs> there's no law against it. Uh, although I may lobby for one. And I love the Dorian scale. Nothing nothing wrong with the Dorian scale. Um, but when you when you mash it together, when you create a mashup like that, you're, you're kind of losing the um, uh, the idiosyncrasies of the, the, each of the individual scales. And the other thing is you're going to be playing, you know, 
A's when you should be playing B flats. You're going to be playing B flats when you should be playing A's. You're going to be playing E's and so on and so forth. So um, when we strip it down to just five notes, it, it, it makes it a little bit more manageable for one thing. And then it also uh, makes the differences more noticeable. Okay, so let's do the D minor pentatonic. This one, I'm probably going to go ahead and use my first and third for these first three notes. So, um, five, four, five, four, five, four. Okay, um, and then uh, we would I would shift down here and play two, five. I'll probably use my first and pinky, and then shift back up and also use my first and pinky. So two, five, three, six, and then three, five. So you got a lot of three fives in here. Okay. Now oh, my gardeners are here. Probably gonna knock on a door. Um, oh, a little bit above. Oh, I haven't noticed. I'll have to keep my eyes open. Oh yeah, look, it's it is going to light green instead of green, kind of green yellow. Right now. Oh yeah, there it goes. All right, what is going on in the world that's creating that? All right, so I don't know. I say snippets so much right now, Holly. Maybe when we're talking about something else, I'll never say it. So I don't know. That might you 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 might you might run out of fluids uh, within the first half hour if we got rid of snippet. In fact, we're gonna we're gonna, or we added snippet. In fact, we're going to use a snippet. We're going to do the first, the top two strings. Okay, look at the, just kind of zero in on each of those pentatonic shapes and look at the top two strings. And you can see that all the changes are incorporated right there so that, that they're fairly easy to see. Squirrel. Yeah, I know. I, well, I have, to, I'm, I'm realizing I'm supposed, I was supposed to look up a, a number for the plump or for the, Gardner, but I didn't look it up, so he's going to come to my door and knock, and I'm not going to have the number he needs. Um, anyway, so let's um, let's let me put the the, the chord progression on um, G. See, I can actually I can grab two bars. So maybe it's a little less. That's G. With a lot of, I'm gonna get rid of that. I don't want. I just do two bar, one bar. Just uh, do a five four bar. <laughs> okay. So we just play the top. Hey, promo. We're playing the top scale. Okay. So here's a lick you can do. Sixth fret to the third fret. Pull it off. Let it ring. Hard to get a vibrato on that first string. Gonna have to push up and down. More up than down. You'll run out of fretboard if you pull down. Side to side doesn't really do much. You really got to go up and down. And then you go. You can hammer it back on and kill the note. Some of us like doing a yodel at the end of a, of a, a sung note. Okay, let's go. So we're still on the root there. Six, two, uh, six, three, six,
let's do three, six, one. Three, six, three, sorry. So we're going D, F, G. The other thing you could do to kind of uh, mash up your, you're not too late. One of the things you can do to really change um, uh, your style and your sound without having to learn any new licks is just change where you put something, okay? So look, one, two, three, four, count with me. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Okay. So now that you know where the pulse is, one, two, three. Do that pull off on one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Okay, now we're going to do it on beat two. You can also do it on the end of one. Uh, but let's do B2. Three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay? Now let's play that lick on B3. And they all have a little bit of a different feel. And and here's the thing, when when you you get bored with your playing or you're bored with listening to someone else's playing is probably because they're doing the same thing every time. They're starting on the, I, I notice a lot of guitar players will start, some guys are just like, they always love to start on the and of four, or they always love to start on the and of one. Uh, I, I, you know, I know drummers that will start a fill and they'll start a fill on, on B2 or something every time they're still starting. So it, you want to mix that up a little bit, okay? So here's B3, one, two, four, one. Count and do it. One, two, three. You're on your way to becoming a guitar teacher. Okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four. One, two. Okay? Now on beat four, it's going to sound a little different. Okay? One, two, three. One, two. The other thing, if you'll notice, I'm going to solo the drums here. Right? The snare is on two and four. Four. Two. Four. Four. One. Four. One, two, three. So you're doing a lick that starts on that percussive element in the music and the two and four is pretty common for a drummer to be hitting uh, the snare so that you will also be emphasizing without even realizing you're emphasizing what they're doing you're like going, oh i'm with you on this okay now check this out i'm going to put all of these now we're going to move them all over one eighth note so instead of playing on one two three and four i'm going to play on the end of one then we're going to play on the end of two and we're going to play on the end of three i mean it, it makes more sense if i do if did like a, a longer phrase but we're just starting with a little phrase so you can Try to find that spot. Okay, you kind of learn where that is. I'm going to go ahead and put the band back in. Uh, I'll just put the bass back in. Okay, so and I'm, again, I'm using logic if you're wondering. Oh, uh, uh, Dennis is going to make a crucial change at, at uh, in Discord, so I hear about that in a little bit. Um, okay, I won't post a link to it then. Okay, so. So, so, again, count with me. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we're going one, uh, three, four, one. Um, we can even go do that. Sit on that high note. Dennis, I may not. Um, I'm supposed to do a lesson. Let me see if I have, you know, if that gets canceled, okay? One. 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 Okay. 
here's B2, uh, the end of B2. of three again we're just moving a, a very very simple lick around to different places and if you because it your tendency is to is to play a lick or start your solo or start your phrase on the same part of the measure every time it's going to get real boring so you want to move it around you don't want to do the same thing every time uh because you'll get bored with your own plan before anybody else will get bored with it so okay and of three one two three one i'm sorry three yeah so now we're pulling off to that snare hit. The snare is on two and four. Three. One, two, three. It's the same lick. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. I saw it, Bruce. One, two, three. Okay. Now uh, let's do the and of four, and what that's going to do is that's going to be a pickup into one. Because if you play something on the and of four, that means you're kind of anticipating the measure. And if the chord changes, you know, you want to make sure that what you're doing is going to work over the new chord. Okay? So like, for example, let me let me go ahead and put a two chord thing in here. Okay, I'm going to go to the... Okay. I know the B flat to G is going to work over both the G chord and the um, the C7 chord. In fact, like I said, the two scales we have there for that, the, the G minor pentatonic and the G minor 6 pentatonic, um, they both have these, the B flat, these top two notes, B flat and the G. Right. It works over both chords, okay? All right, so um, I'm going to change on the and of four. So that way you can hear how the chord change, uh, I'm anticipating the chord change. Three, four. Two, three, four. Two, hear that? The chord change. Very different. Very, very different feel than if I did that on one. Two, three. So that's something you want to do with uh, with any lick that you're working on. Gardner's bugging me here. Okay. All right. So. Uh, I wish they didn't use blowers. All right. I guess I could tell them not to. But. All right. So um, here's my recommendation. You want a, an amp recommendation. A lot of it depends on what style of music you play. Um, but so many people are, you know, so many, so many uh, guitar players are into pedals, myself included, um, that you almost want an amp that's going to handle pedals well. And I, I think a reasonable, let's see, I have a Yamaha Pacifica with a Seymour Duncan. Uh, with Seymour. The budget doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a Fender Princeton, I mean, a Fender Deluxe is a great amp. If you can get a, a reissue Fender, the blackface one, uh, Fender Deluxe. I think it's 23 watts, so it's plenty loud. You, you put it up on a chair, even if you're playing with a drummer, you put it up on a chair, it should be plenty loud. A, a twin, a Fender twin is 100 watts, is way too loud. I've, it's so frustrating, to, sometimes uh, we, call, we call it backline. When you're doing a gig, you order up, um, like whenever, cause, like if you're doing a tour, um, or if you're doing a fly date or something like that, it means you're flying to some city. When I go to like um, Louisville to do the Muhammad Ali Awards, um, they ask me what I want, and I, I will ask for a, um, uh, a Fender, uh, Fender Deluxe. Um, a lot of times, back in the days, they would just automatically have a Fender Twin, but Fender Twins are just unusable. And now, with, if you're going through uh, monitors and all that, they're micing you and everything, I, you just, it's ridiculous. So Fender Twin is good enough, um, or Fender Deluxe is good enough. The other thing about Fenders is they do tend to be multi-directional because they're open back. If you get something that's closed back, you're only going to hear it if you're right in front of it. So the nice thing about a Fender amp in general is the back is open and you have 
you can you have more coverage. You can stand on more places on stage and still hear yourself. Um, but if you have, I've noticed with Marshalls, if, if you're not standing right in front of the amp and it's really loud on stage, you're not going to really be able to hear yourself. Um, I don't know a lot about practice amps. Um, I, I did do a video on the, it's not, it's discontinued, but I'm sure they have a model that's similar to it. But they, um, uh, uh, shoot, uh, not, it's not AC, it's not a tube amp. Um, but it's uh, the Vox uh, practice amp, and I can't remember what it was called. I think it's only five watts, but it, it totally worked fine as a practice amp. Uh, but like I said, a, a Fender Deluxe is a fairly clean amp, which is nice. So if you, if a lot of amps, you know, will break up too easily, um, especially smaller, lower watt amps. If you're trying to turn them up, they're just going to distort. So um, a bass breaker. Oh, I don't know that one. Yeah, the ba yeah, I don't know the bass breaker, but yeah, the, even the Fender Deluxe can get really loud. I have one. Alex has one. I have a silver face from the 70s. Alex has a blackface reissue. I wouldn't buy a, a vintage blackface necessarily. I mean, it's gonna you're gonna pay a premium for it, and um, you're going to have um, you might have a lot of issues with it. And if you're traveling and it's hard to find tubes and fuses and things like that, better to have a newer amp. And I, I mean, I think I see them for about a thousand bucks U.S. typically for the blackface reissues. Um, and then they, I think they have a better one out that they put out that maybe has some extra features. Um, but uh, Watson X, okay, I don't even know what that is. XL. Um, you know, and if you don't have to, don't get rid of any gear. Um, uh, because, I, you know, it's like, I can't tell you. I had a Fender Twin, a uh, Fender, uh, uh, well, it was still Silverface. I, I think it was Silverface, a Fender... Uh, Champ amp, I wish I still had that I sold for like 50 bucks when I was a kid. I looked one up recently and I was like, oh man, <laughs> it's so stupid. It doesn't take up any space. What was I thinking? I needed 50 bucks, I guess. Oh, Richard's here. Hey, Richard, I'm taking a sip. Okay, so yeah, that's, so that's my, you know, so a good clean amp, that way you got the clean options. And then, of course, you got all the metal pedals and all these distortion pedals. You know, if you stack distortion pedals, heck, if you have a a Tube Screamer and a, a DS1 and you play those two together at the same time, you get a pretty gainy sound if you have them kind of cranked. Either either one by themselves is more of a uh, overdrive and then, you know, you get more into the distortion thing if you if you crank them uh, and you and you you play, you know, you start stacking distortion pedals. I mean, <laughs> I always wanted to like get... When I was a kid, I wanted to get like 10 distortion pluses and turn them all the way up and see what it sounded like. Just be hiss. Um, but yeah, you can definitely um, uh, try to, um, you know, get, that's the thing I like about the Fender. You can try to get, you can get a good clean sound and then you can go from there with your effects. Um, uh, 75 amp, it's great for practicing. Is a, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and again, for, for, for practice and stuff like that, there's a lot of amps. Yamaha has one, too, that like you can you can hook your phone up to. You can, through Bluetooth, and play music and jam along with it right through the amp. And, yeah, Line 6 has that. A lot of, I think, I, uh, Fender has those. Um, but for a real working person's amp, I mean, uh, you know, you can't, if you bought a Fender Deluxe, it will you will never get rid of it. It'll be in your arsenal, even if you go on and get a, a matchless Chiefman, Chieftain, or if you go get a diesel for metal stuff, or if you get a Marshall, you know, Plexi, you know, vintage Plexi amp, which will cost you a fortune, um, <clears throat> then uh, that amp will serve you well. It's also very, it's not too heavy. It's easy. It'll fit in your trunk. Um, and uh, whereas the twin is pretty big and it's really heavy and trying to lift that up in your trunk, you're probably going to hurt yourself. Like it, same thing with a 412 cabinet. Just, just not... I think I can get a 412 cabinet in my trunk of my car, but I, I, I never take it anywhere. Um, so, but yeah, now for backline, which again, backline is what you musicians order before they go to a gig. Um, if, if you get, you know, they, they'll ask you, what do you need? You know, what, what do you need for a backline? They'll, t you know, the, that's what usually what I order now. Sometimes I'll order two just in case one goes, or if I want to go stereo, because I usually bring some kind of stereo setup. And if I'm going to have this, the amps on stage, I can I can have a nice stereo sound on stage, which is kind of fun. Okay, yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> why so God created minivans. Um, okay, so let's see where, where are we here? All right, 
So um, let me go to the C chord and let's practice. Um, let's go to the C chord and let's. Uh, I got sidetracked. Okay, I, I apologize about the whole placement of fills. Okay, so this is the C chord. Play the C seven chord. Okay, if you don't know the C seven chord, here's one one way to play it. Whoops, C seven, three five three five three. Yes, that was a major squirrel, but it was all within the context of the minor pentatonic. So and the and both minor pentatonics. Okay. There's the C. So we can get to that if we want. There's no C in this shape here. I'm doing is I'm barring the top two strings, very country sounding lid, and I'm hammering on the third uh, uh, third finger on the fifth fret of the second string, and then hitting the first string, and letting them ring out together if you can. It means you have to put a little bit of arch on your third finger. Look, there's a tritone. There's a guide tones for C. also sounds good over the G chord. But remember, now we're on the C chord, so that's like a Chuck Berry over the G, but it doesn't really work as well for the C. We could do this. That works better over the C chord. Uh, so if I, I like this, like... Over the C. So I'm going second string, third fret, three, five, three, five, three. Minor six, you would use over the C chord. Okay. Um, okay. So let's do this. Let's go back and forth between the C and the G. We would put the piano back in, so we have a little bit more clear-cut C chord. Okay, now we got two chords: the one and the four, the G and the the G and the C. that with me. Okay. See, I'm changing that F to an E. So here's the note I'm playing with the G chord, and there's the note I'm playing with the C chord. over here where I added those horns. <laughs> We're going to work on a couple different things. Uh, so here's, oh no wait, here, sorry, that's the, okay. And really 
start to hear the, you know. So what we're gonna do is a uh, five, uh, sorry, three, six, three, five. And the notes we're playing are uh, D, F, G, A. And that A is in the, the, the D7 chord, and so is the D. this then you'll hear the horns every time I'm gonna go I'm gonna turn the horns down a little bit though um, so if uh, uh, let's just again just to remind you this the snippets I'm gonna we're gonna I'm gonna remind you the the little pieces here on the top two strings and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to stick to those <laughs> I may add those blue notes just because I may get a little bored melodically with just those uh, two the two top two strings okay keep in mind um, we can we can play this up an octave. Oh, dang it, I clicked away from the guitar, hold on. We can take this up an octave. Okay, by just going up to, okay. Um, and what we should practice is probably do this, go do the, do the top two strings of the D minor pentatonic. And then do the top two strings of the G minor pentatonic, G minor six pentatonic. Sorry. And on the D, and then on this one, and on the G, and that will get you from that four, the five to four part of the blues. Oh shoot, buffering. Dang it, really bad. Hold on. What is going on? Why does it do it some days and not others? All right. Oh my goodness. I see it. I see it lagging. So I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to... Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna get rid of this. Just a little bit of fun there. I gotta put more reverb on this though. Uh, here. Too much reverb. Waiting for the lag to stop. Oh, okay, we're back to green. Okay, that's good. Hopefully it's better now. Lost a bunch of viewers though. Dang it. Really? I was up in the 40s and it dropped down to now 25. <sighs> yeah, streaming issues. Yeah, I guess. I, I who, who knows where it is? It could be in, but right now um, in uh, uh, the OBS is gr showing green. So I think we're good for now. And I got to go back to my guitar. Hold on a second. Um, okay, so, um, so what was I saying? Oh, okay. Yeah, so you might want to get good at uh, for because you know the the that section of the blues, uh, which is basically the the ninth bar and the tenth bar, uh, is often neglected and there's it's hard to navigate. You, you're really tempted to kind of do okay. Here's a you know you know like take your D lick, whatever you do on D, and take it down a whole step. Uh, to play over the C. And in this way, what you can do is if you play the D minor pentatonic, and again, I'm just kind of using the top two strings, and then go to the G, uh, the G minor six for the C chord, that sounds a more musical than if I went. It just sounds like, oh, you're just uh, you're modulated. <laughs> so. Okay, sorry about yeah, sorry about that. I wish I had you know control. I I pay for the business like the best high speed internet. Okay, so here's our blues. Texting me. All right, so, okay, so here I go. I'm gonna do the, um, let me get the, there's the one chord, the four chord coming up.
get the idea. I don't know if you noticed. Um, I don't know if you noticed the um, uh, subtle changes, but it really is very subtle. Um, the shape that, and then over the C and over the D. And I tried to stick with that, but again, the 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 um, the G minor pentatonic works fine over the C. Totally works fine over the C chord, and the and the C, G minor six pentatonic works fine over the G. So those two are pretty much uh, interchangeable. I can play the the D minor pentatonic over the G chord too. It doesn't work very good over the C chord, um, uh, but if I so it totally works. Um, so the D minor pentatonic works pretty good over the G, and it, and it works great over the D, of course. Okay, stop. All right, I'm getting tired of that progression. <laughs> I want to go up a half step. All right, so let's see. Uh, okay, um, I've got a... Hey, Mira, how's it going? Um, so, uh, oh, let me, let me give you an example of starting phrases on different... Uh, places in the bar, okay? Meaning, if you're going to play a phrase, and and like, um, what what it implies that you're going to leave some space, which is always good when you're soloing, okay? And I've talked about this Monday, talked about it Friday, but uh, space or rests in musical term um, is another way to create tension, <laughs> right? It's like, is he going to play again? Oh, good, he played again, and there's tension and release. And then you may play something tense when you come out of that space. And so you're, you're answering tension with tension, but it'll create a little bit of release because they'll be relieved that you're playing and you're not going to like walk off the stage or something. So, um, so to move your starting point around implies that you're going to have a little bit of space. So I'm going to, um, let me think of a lick, uh, Okay, I'm, I'm going to play it like this, not, I'm going back to this, to, uh, gosh darn it, I want, that's it. Okay, I'll do that lick. Okay, here's the lick I'm going to do. All right, I might. I may not bend that B flat, so I'm going. Third fret to fifth fret on the second string, then third fret, and then sixth fret, and then back to the first uh, finger on the third fret, and then uh, the uh, third finger on the fifth fret of the second string. <laughs> Too many numbers. Okay, and then um, first first uh, string, first finger. Okay, let me, uh, Dennis, should I not put a, a link up right now to Discord? Are you thinking about resetting it? So. Um, and that's fine. Okay, so, oh, I have to upload these to Discord, though. I'm going to go ahead and upload. I don't know what radical change you're going to make over there, but I'm going to upload these uh, um, these diagrams. It's one of the things that we use the Discord for is I in, in, the, in the tab, Tom's Bookmarks, is where I put all of these uh, diagrams. I also put any, uh, let's see, where is it? Here it is. Um, any paperwork that I do, I scan and put up there, going way back to the beginning of these lessons, I think. We're pretty close. Okay. They are all up there. All right. Um, okay, so check this out. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i tell you what I'm doing as I'm doing. And I'm, I'm thinking about doing a Twitch maybe today, and I'm going to just jam over the blues and explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Okay? All right. Now, uh... Oh, okay, okay. Perfect. Yeah, that's great, Dennis. Totally fine with that. Um, all right. So, I, I need to start the blues. Here we go. Do I? Uh, let's see. I'm not putting the horns in there. The horns annoyed me. <laughs> so. And this is up. I upload. Okay, wait. Got it. I'm stopping. Let me, see, let me give you the link for that video because uh, 
this will, uh, here it is right here. Copy, can I copy link? Get shareable link, okay. So the blues I'm jamming over is right here. So if you want to go here, you can jam on this to your heart's content, and I make money off of it. Anytime you, uh, I mean, let, let's see how much money I've made off of it so far. <laughs> At least, I, I, I share way too much. Monetization, it's monetized. Oh, wait, i got to go to analytics to see it. So I made $2.79 off of it. <laughs> so it's not bad. And that's in the first how many days? Seven days. Okay. So, you know, if I can make 10 bucks a month off of this thing, you know, that's 120 a year. You know, I'll take that. The work's been done. It's kind of how, how I operate. Get the work done and try to benefit from it. Okay. So I touched my face. That's one of the rules in our drinking game. If I touch my face, we all get to take a sip. Okay, so I'm going to try to, uh, the lick, what was it again? Okay, so my what I'm going to show you here is how the lick sounds different when you start it on different places in the beat. Okay, how many notes do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. So I'm going to start it on beat one. It's going to have a certain vibe. I'm going to start it on the end of one. It's going to have a different vibe. I'm going to start it on two. It's going to have a different vibe, not only because of where it starts, but also because of where it ends. And this is a way, I mean, if you want, if you've got to do a billion choruses uh, live, this is one way to really milk a good idea. It's kind of a theme in variations. What you're doing is you're coming up with a theme and the variation in this case will be moving it around and starting it on different beats to create different tensions. Now, there is a swing. Yeah, you'll hear the difference. It's, um, oh, okay. Um, sorry. What time is it now there? Trying to set up a lesson in London. Via mm -mm 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 okay. Um. So again, I'm going to take that lick and I'm going to move it around. Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay, we're set. Uh, so I got to I stop here in a little bit so I can do that lesson. Um, There's the jam, standard blues. All right. Okay, well, I'll check that out in a second person. Hey, Vito. Nice to see you. Max, good to see you. Darren. Okay. So I'm going to start with on beat one. Here's Five chord, good. right on the downbeat. Okay, now I'm gonna go on the end. On B2, four. Oh, I missed it. Oh, I missed it. I did one. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is gonna be. on B2 every time, every one of those. Okay, and of, and of two. Four, one, two. See that? It gets to the last note right before the chord change. I like that one. Four, one, two. One, two. That's kind of a cool one. I 
Okay, I'll do it all. Okay, beat three. One, two. See, now I'm landing right on the down. One, two. see if I can stop this and answer it. We'll, we'll continue. So I was on the end of two. So I'm sorry. I don't understand the question. Uh, jam jar. Hello. Are you, oh, say, thanks. Jam jar. Where's jam? Oh, jam jar. Yeah. Uh, rhythm changes. Uh, just the blues. It's not the rhythm changes a different chord progression. Uh, rhythm changes and rhythm changes is, is, is a very common change in jazz. Okay. Question from Vito. What's your question, Anita? Where is it? Dang, Vito, how far? Oh, there it is. How will you go lower now to the 12th fret, the next lower straight? Oh. Uh, um, okay, and then John K had a question. John K, where's your question? Oh. So you can overlap G over D and C pentatonics, other words playing different pentatonics. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, that's kind of the point. You, you know, some pent every pentatonics, you know, they're going to have different sounds. You, you, technically, I could use alt. I could use A flat over. It's just going to create all sorts of tensions. Um, but yeah, the D minor pentatonic seemed to work pretty good over the G progression or the G chord. Not so good over the C. Uh, but it worked fine over the G, and of course it, it was going to work over the D. That's why we made the change. Um, sign you up for private lessons. Actually, I only have one student. I'm so busy, it's hard to do it. Uh, but but uh, we're actually also working on songwriting because uh, he's going to do a record. So uh, the, the student in London, who shall remain nameless. Um, let's see. Um, uh, so... Um, <coughs> Um, oh, so, uh, I'll send you a PM in Discord when I get extra page in so you can make a new Discord link. Okay, cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, and then let's see, what else was I... Okay, so let's get back to this. I'm going to play this lick again, um, and I'm going to... Um, I'm using the G minor six pentatonic. One, two. One. Next, we're gonna do beat three. We change. Okay, so here's beat three. I'll let this go. Three different spots on each beat that I could start. One, two. Seven note lick though. One, two. Okay, and then a veto, I'm gonna get to you. I'm gonna go up to the 12th fret. Or 15. Okay, beat two. Kind 
Okay, now if I want to move that down an octave to where I was, I go down two strings and three frets. Same as that. Four. One, two, B, three. to go another octave down. It's getting woofy though in the room. Oh, change pickups. One, two. Okay, now we're gonna go on kind of the end of three. We're gonna go somewhere after three because I'm doing triplets. One, two, three. It's going later, see? I'm, I'm moving it different, okay? B4, one, two, three. B4, you're kind of ending it later. It's kind of, the funny thing is that I'm realizing as I'm doing it, again, I'm not the smartest tool in the shed. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, does it? I'm not the smartest knife in a drawer. <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, that I'm playing a triplet lick. If I'd done an eighth note lick, um, it you know would be like one, let's see, one, like that. Like if I played straight eights or or even swung eights, it would sound like three, four. That was what I should have done. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four, one. on the end of one. Okay? <laughs> uh, but what I did, so those were eighth notes, but swung eighth notes. What I was doing was a triplet lick. So I had three notes per bar, so it was like impossible to really do the, the, the uh, to kind of emphasize uh, the end of a, end of a uh, beat. Uh, so now I'm, I feel like an idiot. I'm probably gonna delete that whole section. Uh, oh, you didn't know what that's, that's what your switch is on your electric did? Yeah, this is, you know, the pickups, it's this pickup, and then these two, and then this pickup, and then these two, and then this pickup. Um, but, uh, okay, so let me change the lick. It's the same lick, but I'm going to change the tempo. It's going to be a lot slower, which is going to be nice, okay? Um, here it is, same lick. We're going to beat two now. Four, one. And of two. Four, one, two. B three. One, two. And of three. One, two, three. Three, that's nice, right? Two. Now my other, but where I screwed up, it still works because I was moving it, so you could hear how it landed there. But this is a little bit more obvious when I'm playing pure, you know, playing eighth note. Okay, what did I do? Leave off an eight of three. Here's the four. Three. Oh, no, I went back to triplets. Three. One. And a four sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so moving your phrases around will will make you sound like a different 
different, you know, won't, will make you sound like a different guitar player. It will make you sound because, and, and, and trust me, if you went and listened to a lot of particularly blues players, but any, any players, if you went around and if you went, listened to their solos and then just kind of kept track of where they started their phrases, um, you would probably find a lot of consistencies. You probably find, and I don't know, and I'm not, I can't think of any offhand, but let's just say like BB King. Oh, he, gosh, he always starts on beat four. He really loves starting his phrases on beat four. Um, and again, this is assuming you're not playing solid all the way through. I could play licks all the way through without any pauses. Um, but a pause or a rest is a great way to create a little bit of tension. Um, and uh, um, so if you're, if you're putting some pauses in your playing, then you can toy with when you start your next phrase. And um, you'll probably do that moving, moving things around without even knowing it. Uh, but you also will probably do the same starting point every time without notice, noticing that you're doing that. So you so you could listen, you know, listen, like I said, you could pull up a BB King track and go, okay, oh, he, he started, you know, he just count one, two, three, four, one, keep tabs of, you know, you can even use your fingers, you know, one, two, you know, maybe he does, starts on three, uh, you know, uh, Buddy Guy or Albert King or, uh, you know, Albert Lee or uh, Albert Lee? I don't know. Albert Lee's a country player. Uh, uh, Alvin Lee? Alvin Lee's kind of a blues player. Um, anyway, there's a lot of great blues players. You can you can check them out and then, and then kind of map out where the heck they are uh, uh, doing their... Um, uh, so... Yeah, uh, so it's technically not an octave mandolin. I've been told that I can raise that top string up to E, but right now it's it technically sold as an Irish bazooki. It's a gold tone Irish bazooki. I bought it to be an octave mandolin, but when I got it, the the top two strings feel so tight. They say, oh, yeah, you can tune up to E. I'm just like, ah, I feel like they're going to break. So I kind of want to get thinner strings. In fact, I have a micrometer. I can measure the gauge, gauge on those. If those are nine, the only problem is they're pretty long. Um, and I think what I did was I opened a pack of nines and, and they weren't the strings weren't long enough. Uh, so I'm not sure what to do on that. But um, I guess I can try to tune it up and if it breaks, it breaks. But I, I don't want to break the instrument either or poke my eye out. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's technically a bazooki, Irish bazooki. Um, and I, because I do have some composers that I work for that... Um, uh, that will write um, uh, down an octave, you know, or down too low um, for the, the the standard mandolin. If that makes sense. So um, anyway, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you understand the problem. Yeah, it's. Um, and B, where are you located? I threw my back out on Sunday, changing a tire. It's like I got a knot right there. I can feel it. At least I can. Yeah, we confirmed pants. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> oh, B. Oh, I see. Yeah, you already asked B. Um, Hey, Mr. Benny, I'm about to sign off because uh, I actually have to uh, teach a lesson. And um, um, so let's see. I will um, continue on this. We'll work our way down, okay? Um, the If you'll notice, there's a, a snippet here, too. <laughs> Oh, De okay, you made a new channel. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, Euros. Oh, that's right. Where are you, Promo? It's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so if I go to the Discord, intros, and oh, there it is. Okay. So, and here's the, oh, okay. All right. 
So if I copy that, so I copy that link, it says invite link to this page, okay? Do you want me to, um, Dennis, can I post that link right now? Okay, look at that, how quick is that? Done. All right, so. Okay, so I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna play a little bit more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use these three pentatonic shapes. Um, and like I said, if you want to uh, if you take a, a snippet, a section of the pentatonic scale and you want to, you can move it up an octave. And then to go down the next octave, just take off uh, go down three frets and down two strings. And same thing, go down, well, go down two and two. Because um, again, we have to accommodate the stupid tuning of the guitar. Oh, Holly, God bless you. Um, and that will, now here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. Remember, this is extra, extra credit. This is for all you, like, players that, do a lot more playing, you know, you're better than your average Joe. Remember, we could play this pentatonic in five, you know, we've got all the different shapes, right? And I could, we could do all of those. Um, pentatonic number four, here's number five, right? We, I numbered them. It's my random numbers, the, the pentatonic thing. But now we can we can take this, you know, pentatonic number two, and we've got to find, oh, we got to make this the minor six pentatonic. So how do we do? And you find some really cool phrases in there when you start to when you start to mess around with it. Now the D minor pentatonic is the same thing as the G minor pentatonic. Okay, so when you when you start to move that one around, you'll just realize, oh wait, it's still the same five shapes that I already know. So the only one we really have to accommodate, oh, I gotta, sorry, I gotta close, not close the window, but step away from it. Um, um, but we can, you can take every one of your G minor pentatonic shapes up the fretboard and take that that seventh and take it down to the sixth. In other words, the F down to the D. I mean, to the E. And you'll have new shapes up and down the neck. Uh, we could do that. I could take the minor six pentatonic and move it up and down the neck. It wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. Um, it just means uh, you, we could end up spending a long time on this. And I, I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to play us out. Um, guys, just enjoy. And I, I I've got to uh, got to take a break before I teach a lesson. Um, and uh, I've got other stuff I got to do. So um, uh, let me uh, boop, 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 boop. go here. No, I need to go to logic. There we go. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna start this. And um, sure a little bit. Uh, just for a second here while I talk. But I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna play this. I may do this on Twitch later today too. I don't know. Um, and I think my Twitch handle is also T Straley, so um, you may be able to find me and subscribe to that if you're on Twitch. But what I may do on Twitch, Twitch is a little bit, I will probably like just play the jam and say what I'm doing. So it'll be different. It won't be just a guy jamming. It'll be a guy jamming and explaining what he's doing. All right. So, um, so what I may do here is I'm going to, I'm going to use the different pentatonic shapes, but I'm also probably going to go to the different, um, I'm not going to stay in the same position, and I'm going to probably go to the Mixolydian shapes too, okay? Those shapes. And those are also up in the Discord. I upload, everything's uploaded now to the Discord, all right? All right, thanks guys, I'll see you later.
sweating. Blues. Sitting on a G note. But I'm going up to A. Kind of country six. Using the open G string. Six pentatonic, G minor pentatonic. I'm sorry, G minor six pentatonic. I'm gonna go to Mixolydian. there's going to be any uh, any audience for that on Twitch, but I may do that later on Twitch. I've got to take off. I will, uh, Dennis, I will check that out right now. I will log on to the uh, to the Discord and check out. That's a great idea to have a land page for new, um, and that's where I'll go to get that permanent link, and that way uh, they can go there and they can see the rules, and that's a great idea. Brian, all waiting on the sticky note. Oh, I, yeah, I didn't do a sticky note, did I? I didn't make a stink face. Okay, I will. Uh, I will talk to you later. And um, why am I? What am I rolling over? It's weird. There's no cables under my chair, but it's like feels like I'm rolling over something. My uh, rug pad may be flipped over. Okay, so I will uh, see you. God willing, I'll see you on Friday. Okay, hopefully we'll all be there. And uh, Appreciate the chat uh, revenue there, everybody. That that means a lot to me and uh, helps me do what I do. Um, trust me, it all adds up. Okay, and uh, yeah, and if you do your Christmas shopping through links on uh, Amazon, I make a little bit of, of love there as well. Okay, so I will I will talk to you later. Um, and then if um, uh, anything changes on Friday, I will try to address that on the Facebook page on Twitter uh, on the discord page and as well on the um on maybe even the community page of youtube or i may even go on for two minutes and say i'm not going on <laughs> if that makes sense okay take care everybody bye-bye